Hi, welcome to this Open Security Summit session in April 2023. And we have um, Anna, who is going to walk us through cybersecurity assessments, planning the way forward. Over to you, Anna. Uh, good evening, everyone. Right, I'm like, it's a rainy, stormy, cold autumn morning here in Wellington, New Zealand, 5 a.m. So that's why forgive me if any uh, mistakes or slow down or anything like this. Uh, but I'm really happy to be here at the Open Security Summit again. And uh, if you uh, you can hear from my accent that I'm not native English speaker. I'm uh, originally from Russia, but I moved to New Zealand over 10 years ago now. And I work as a um, uh, cyber security consultant at a company called Defend here in New Zealand. So we provide a lot of uh, different services, uh, including just general consulting that what I do. And I lead um, assessment practices in our company it means I'm in charge of defining how good it looks like when we do assessments for our clients, like cybersecurity assessments. So that's why I decided I want to share my experiences um, because I do this with like multiple clients uh, often. And I just wanted to share uh, how uh, we approach this and uh, what benefit comes out of it and what you can do, because this is, I find a very, very useful thing. And then every company uh, at some stage go through this. So let's have a look. Why are we doing the cybersecurity assessments and why I call it fighting way forward? What I see every day is that Cybersecurity is complex, very complex. And we cybersecurity specialists uh, often assume these, um, some knowledge and um, just the state that exists, it exists only in the area that we can see in our professional area. But when we go outside, it's not as um, developed as we think. And we go outside more and more and more because cybersecurity today is not uh, information technology, not information security uh, area anymore. Today, we're talking about uh, secure operating models. Uh, what it means? What does it mean? It means that today, security is part of business function, just every business function, because like, decades ago like even a few years ago for some companies digital like cyber was only part of the business maybe they were using email or something like this so then eventually file storage today i assume you won't be able to find uh, many businesses not having a digital um, footprint at all and for majority of businesses uh, being digital is just like the core business it means that cybersecurity is part of the core business, not the IT function anymore. And when we go out of our IT box, we uh, and embed security in everything. Now it's just it's the all the relationships, everyone uh, involved, so many different people with different levels of understanding, uh, different um, functions like uh, needs operate uh, securely. And this is really, really hard to grasp with just an eye. Even in a small company, it's almost impossible today to just with one person to keep it in their head and uh, come up with um, roadmap solutions or any kind of security programs. That's why we need some kind of uh, structured approach to understand what's going on. Uh, I think it's the same, like, uh, yeah, we'll go talk about assessments first, but what is an assessment in general? So when so, Google- So just a quick, uh, just a oh, quick one yeah. on, yes. on, 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 the, on the point you just, you just made, right? I think one, one of the things that's interesting that you're sort of touching is, is the idea that, you know, security is now uh, much more than just, you know, even an IT function, right? Because yeah. it's also, it's kind of, it's almost, we need to think about security as embedding in, in the whole, company-wide operations, which also lead us that when we think about fixing and driving change, more and more like, you know, my big paradigm shift was that realizing that we're not talking about improving a bit of security here. We talk about changing how sometimes oh. the business is about yeah. driving change. Because if you don't, if you can't change sometimes some business process or some business activities, exactly. some business funding, you won't yeah. be able to change security because security is almost, we are, 
we sometimes measure the side effects of certain security or some of business practices. Exactly. That's why when we talk about security, uh, we don't talk about technology anymore. We talk about uh, people, processes, technology. And the um, yeah. proportions of this can be different. We in defend, we believe that people part it takes 50% of all security activities when the processes are 30% and technology only 20%. And when you, but, what I see uh, among clients a lot is that people still do this um, security equal IT. And that's why yeah. often people uh, who are in charge of security are part of IT, like the security manager will report to uh, CTO or IT manager, CDO or something like this, right? So it's still there. For me, it's the same um, uh, situation as with knowledge work. We are, like we just saw a shift just recently from a uh, con um, conveyor like this uh, production factory floor to a knowledge work to say, oh no, it's different. You can't just use this 40 hour week or this work shifts or uh, this thing. So you just really need to find, like, um, find new ways of uh, organizing work for knowledge work. And that's like the remote yeah. work coming in and this like the rejection of the remote. No, you need to be the office in the office. No, you don't have to be in the office for this type of profession. You need flexible hours because you can't just produce knowledge on on on, on a clock, right? And like on the like a Pavlov's dog that oh now you need to produce like you produce knowledge from eight to twelve, then you build this uh, in your timesheet, right? So it doesn't work. And yeah. a lot of people realize it, and it's already widespread knowledge. With security, it's we see in the same picture. It's again just started spreading knowledge that it's not just IT function anymore because digital is the core, um, like uh, type of functioning for any company today. I highly recommend to Google and to look into secure operating models. So that's uh, the topic that uh, talks like about this, looks into this problem. We've got a very um, uh, you know, cool uh, like expert on this in our company. I'm uh, my colleague. I might talk to him um, just to in, like talk him into uh, presenting this idea at this forum next time. Yeah, cool, cool. idea, yeah, I'll talk to him, yeah. So moving forward from this, uh, what our assessments are, because now like we agree that this is everywhere now, and now we need to assess everything. <laughs> yeah. So if we go to just not just in general, if you Google assessment first, just like assessment, the first one will be about education, about people like students, all the stuff, how we assess people. But then second will be assessing systems and uh, yeah, so first people, then systems. But in general, I would say it's the process is of evaluating or appraising something to determine its quality, value, or performance. So we just look at something and say, this is works like this. And then we also define good or bad. So is it well, actually like a work, uh, is it works well enough or not? So very simple. So when so, we talk so about if, if, uh, yep. uh, and if you take this, right? Isn't there a case to say that, you know, there's lots of areas in the business that also care about this. So you, you know, yeah. you, you know, I, I work, you know, one of my jobs is it's a big company, right, in the UK. And, and then there's parts of the business that have nothing to do with cybersecurity that care about this, that are focused exactly. on managing quality, managing value, managing performance. But that could be yeah. uh, throughout the supply chain. That could be on... HR operation, the, that could uh, be, et cetera, right? What's the name of this? Just the, the um, aberration for the in like in like um, index that when how when you they ask, would you recommend this company? Uh, oh, NPR. Yeah, so NPS, so NPS. MP, NPS, so we do NPS in big companies, we do pay employee NPS, right? Internal one. It's assessment. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why uh, when uh, you will do this, why, uh, for example, in defend as a practice lead, I'm uh, working like not only cybersecurity um, uh, assessments for like consulting led consultant led assessments, but also I'm in charge of the general framework of assessments of all areas in the company, including Microsoft 365 and all engineering stuff and cloud like architecture and things as the 
framework. So what does it mean to assess? What are the steps in the procedure? And we'll talk about it a little bit here, but today we will be talking not about assessments in general, we will be talking about cybersecurity um, resilience assessments. Yeah. Because this is the one that you start with. This is the one that I would say is the, the system health check. In our case, cybersecurity systems, the whole system, but cybersecurity lens or the health check. And the health check, it's not, it can be uh, triggered by different things. You've got something not working or pain somewhere. You go to the doctor and the doctor says, mm, I'm not sure. I think it might be this, but let's uh, do this blood test and some maybe scans or um, ultrasound. Who knows, right? I'm like, and sometimes you feel nice, but you still go through the health check because this is your regular one and uh, you're aging and you really want to know maybe something already changing going on, but you don't want to be proactive, you, uh, reactive, you want to be proactive. So that's the same principles. And I really love this joke uh, and because it applies to cybersecurity assessments a lot. For me as a consultant, I uh, come across it every time is that um, a patient, like a person comes to the doctor uh, with them uh, complaints that I got pain everywhere. And the doctor asks, where do you have pain? I have pain here, I have pain here, I have pain here. And doctor looks at his finger, like, doctor, am I dying? And doctor looks at his finger, says, mm, not sure, you're just, your finger's broken, right? So, <laughs> So we, I say it also like, ah, we've got this problem with this uh, cybersecurity thing. And I look at this, no, uh, unfortunately, it's not the cybersecurity or information technology problem. It's a business problem. And you have, that's what you mentioned. And you have to change some of your business process. Yeah. So here, so. Couldn't, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't you rename this a little bit to say cybersecurity assessment as a business system health check? Uh, yep, yeah, there's a business system health check. Yeah, good point. Because there's a direct correlation, isn't it? There's a direct correlation yeah. between, you know, the things that we raise in cybersecurity, which yeah. tend to be side yeah. effects, and but, business health check, which are operations that are not working effectively. But it, when we Especially talk about when, when cybersecurity connect. assessments, yes. But if you do any assessment, it will be any system health check, right? For example, you do your Microsoft 365 assessment. You are checking your health of your Microsoft 365 um, uh, ecosystem, right? So it, yeah, just in general. Yeah, just but in cybersecurity, other... yeah, but cybersecurity, I think, has a very interesting property, which is mm. we can, if we can connect the dots, we can connect a problem with its side effects and its risk. So yeah. in a way, if you th think yeah. about it, like if you apply risk analysis to the outcomes of your assessment, and if you then connect your risks, your risks to your threat agents yeah. and your assets and your values and the probability and your incidents, the, the, health, the health check becomes a lot more real, more, much more significant we'll because it's not there. just, this is bad or this is no, not no, well no, no. done. We'll get there, we'll get there, yeah. that's the, Thing that uh, I see a lot in um, in the industry, and that's what uh, we offered differently, and we'll talk about it. So, yep, about this business cool. connection, spacious. Cool. Well, we'll be there. All right. All right. Yeah. So another thing to be careful uh, is that this um, sometimes people miss um, place like that, that just like uh, confuse uh, audits and assessments. And just be careful when someone says, oh, we need to do assessment and sometimes they mean audit and vice versa. When some people say, oh, let's do the audit, but actually they do an assessment, but there is difference. And there is difference in that, that for uh, standards, so for the as audit, it's documented criteria. Sorry, I've got a typo in here. Anyway, just we'll fix it. Uh, it's documented criteria, I'll test, uh, and uh, it's very strong, like very strict, like you've got your, like, for example, 27, um, ISO 27 K1, it's a certificate, like certification, they've got very strong, um, strict um, uh, requirements, and you have to check everything, do you meet or not, with this uh, assessment, it's general guidance, you can follow these standards, or but you don't have to. Another uh, uh quality of our assessments is that uh systematic but 
assessments of you can be use any framework it's very flexible you can change it to meet your uh current um business requirements or the company grants or any of the situational uh, requirements with the audits it's documented procedures that's why you have uh, to be certified to be an auditor you have to learn there are rules and that's quite strict but most important one the, i think the the biggest difference between audits and assessments is the trust with audits, you can't uh, check the box if you don't have the evidence and you really dig deep and let's show me this, 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 and this. With assessments, we don't do this because for assessments, speed is more important than the digging deep. And um, the we just ask questions and people will say something like the answers are, yeah, we do this or we do that. And it's good enough for assessments. We don't uh, observe, we don't go to logs or anything like this to uh, prove that they're doing this. And this is the very uh, important to understand because when you do the your internal assessment, don't dig deep, just really look at the, what's happening, talk to people and it's good enough for this type of evaluation. Any questions here? No, I, th I think it's great. I think you can add, there's there's definitely some memes that you can add to this, right? <laughs> yeah, um, but just be careful. Um, assume uh, when uh, on, talk on, about it. Yeah. Because because I because I think that there's there is that thing where I I, I will say it's on the this the two worlds of do you want to be compliant or do you want to be secure? Right. And and actually if you want to be compliant, you can do an audit, right? But if you actually want yep. to be secure or safe. You yes, actually exactly. do assessments, yeah. Yeah. and you need yeah. to have the feedback loop, right? And then you need yeah. to have those maturity models of understanding where you know also, but also the assessment allows you to add a context because you want to then start to put things yes. within, you know, yeah. uh, you know, again, you know, yeah. like you know, sometimes I think I think security we 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 do a lot of this service by focusing sometimes sometimes too much on audit type things where yes. and on the assessment. Checklist. Yeah, exact yeah. checklist right which can actually cause a lot more damage than uh than other things yes. where if you can have an assessment and you have context then you can adjust much more the risk appetites of of what you're operating on so audits work perfectly with tech side of security and also well with processes yeah. but audits don't work well with people and uh, that's why you need assessments. But it means that when you do the audits, you miss 50% of your security activities, right? <laughs> I would even argue, even on the first one, they don't work very well, right? Anything that- I mean, like, still, still better, but on people that just don't work at all. Yeah. Because you can't really check it. That's why, that's, you, but you, you need all of this because you need audits uh, for, like you said, for compliance and for other uh, reg regulatory obligations, right? And all that, but, but just yeah. people, misuse these words often like they, they just yeah. mm, well and the, the other key there is yeah. evidence yeah. right i think the other yeah. key word that you have there is evidence right yeah um on this and uh, actually you know billy just made a, a really good point Billy, i'll just make you a co-host you can you can chip in right uh if you want to right so you want to just make your point uh you just send the on, on the chats if you're able to can you hear me yeah we can Perfect. yeah Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Pretty much every business I've worked in, uh, I'm not really a cybersecurity professional or anything. I'm learning right now, but um, not necessarily dealing with security. But anytime there's any kind of an audit or something like that, um, we're all, everybody is told about it we're all on alert ready for this usually on a specific day and a specific shift that the auditor is going to be showing up and everybody is yeah. behaving themselves and is being perfect just to pass that audit completely defeating the the entire purpose of it uh, yep yeah, you, 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 you're, you're compliant on, on yeah. July 22nd, right? <laughs> and then October 7th or 14th, which yeah. is the dates, yeah. the dates of the yeah. audits, right? You need those surprise audits where they just show up and then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or or you need, but then this is the thing, right? Because like, again, you know, audit, you know, again, it uses the definition. Like if you go to an evidence space, you can, you can ask for evidence that that has happened throughout 
a period of time. So you 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 know once you go versus a trust base to yeah we're doing it to to evidence, then you know it's not you, you cannot just act in one day, right? You actually have to show that you've been acting like that throughout the last you know six yeah. months. And Absolutely. When you, yeah, when it's trust based because you talk to people and gather and uh, this information, analyze it, and you are human and you talk to people, not by the you not ask the, the questions, but pull these things like conversations. I can tell you as an assessor that um, it's very difficult to hide things. You can feel it. You can see it. How people talk about their um, uh, controls and procedures. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. We've got a few more slides to cover. Okay, so another thing that we're not, we're not talking about assessments, there's some, they're not rules, but something that we have to keep in mind. So the assessment should be fair. And fair, I mean that you should not uh, paint the picture uh, better than it is. Uh, internally or externally, you should really be like honest uh, about what's happening. And it should be valid, so you can't just come up with things and or pretend that you see something or don't see something. They really need to be like, we see no evidence, but it should not be um, like fantasized too much. I mean, like from up, some people think about it, but you need to have use, that's why I use like cross-examination kind of techniques and to make sure that the whatever information uh, comes is, is true. They need to be reliable. Uh, means that what I mean by reliable here that though it's not freestyle there's still structure and procedure to assessment it means that you can repeat it uh, and then you can compare results and when you see the um, numbers there and some charts and um, uh, findings uh, you know that you can uh, build your um, program or do some actions based on this and useful this is important one because often I see reports that have a lot of information they're huge but you and they're very like informative and interesting from the again uh, expert point of view but when you give it to business and they read it uh, and they just look at you and uh, we don't know what to do next and sometimes I come across these uh, clients that had this assessment, some kind of assessments some long time ago. And they, yeah, we've got this document, but we didn't do anything because we didn't know how to act on it. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's some interesting, sorry, there's some properties that came out of it, like on a reliable, you know, repeatable, you know, the fact, I, I really, I, but it's interesting because again, you, you, you're almost making it, uh, focus on on the, the 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 quality outcomes we want to get to. Like for it to be useful means it should be actionable, right? Something should come out of it, right? You you want to make sure that people understand it and you can repeat it, like you know, reliable, right? So if you make the same assessment every month or every week or every six months, yep. you should produce similar results, right? Or else you know you, you don't get that, right? And uh, and uh, and again, that's why I, I, I like your definition of assessment because it it forces us to to also measure these properties which is what we want to be. Indeed. So uh, a little bit of how this assessment fit into the cyber, like we're talking about cyber resilience now. So we will talk about uh, just in general assessments, we'll talk about cyber resilience. So sometimes it's called maturity. Uh, we prefer to call it cyber resilience and I'll just explain why. So this is the uh, kind of paradigm I came up with, I um, utilized for my work day today. And that's the, uh, when we talk about like good security posture or mature security, that's the, some kind of like baseline that we want to get to. So when the person, uh, when the company starts their security journey, so they uh, want to get to some state, this is a good state of security and they create the security program to get there. And I see a lot of a lot of companies uh, at this stage because a lot of companies just start in their security journey. So when they use assessments, they do assessments at the beginning. This is where we are. That's how assessments really help to uh, shape the security program, showing the gaps. Because um, to be honest, uh, they're rarely. I see companies that just like really zero. No, they still have some support. Like my, Microsoft is doing good job, good good job there, because 
as soon as the company signed up for Microsoft, they fed all these bits and pieces like they sold to them, but uh, part of some of these bits and pieces are about security. Uh, just it's embedded in there like uh, Asia AD or um, just going to the cloud in general or some other like Defender. It just, it's there. And uh, it means that they've got some controls. What they're missing, like majority of cases is the um, program, some good plan, some, some understanding, like thinking around, okay, this is what, where we are from cybersecurity resilience point of view, where we need to move to. Uh, so they do, we do assessments for them and assessment report is a huge help uh, to define this program uh, to the good posture. For mature companies uh, at any level of maturity, the problem is then as soon as you uh, get to this point is good enough. And there are some companies I've seen like uh, uh, com some companies are amazing and this luckily we have them. And I wish we like uh, had more and but people are like and companies are growing in this area. Um, uh, so they achieve this uh, good state, uh, but the environment is constantly changing. And the thing about resilience is that uh, for me, I define resilience as uh, be able uh, to like to adapt, like to withstand the change and stay secure when the constant the environment constantly changes. So you constantly redefining your good and you check how you're doing to the redefined good. So that's what the like people like, uh, not mistake kind of thing they're doing today. So they define, this is the good place. We assessed against it. And then in a year we assess again and a year we assess again and a year we assess again. But the thing is that the good change, defined, like the good definition changes. You need to change this defined good and then check against this new good. So there's two, mm -hmm. Process, parallel processes happen it's like juggling things but uh, th 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 yeah. it is so for the mature companies we um it's not about just security problems pro program but how to change your goals uh, how to make sure that you uh, check against your risks all the time uh how do yeah. you um embed the uh change in threat um environment and the staff, so how to keep this uh, security posture. And again, you use assessments to uh, check uh, how, how you're doing, yeah. So, so on that, do you also measure the cases where, you know, security happened because you embedded cases and where security happened because you had to put energy on it? So, so for a good example, let, let's say that you arrive at the the first time of the company, a lot of the security activities are going to happen because you put energy into it, right? And you, yep. you know, almost you have to, you, you have to use a security program to move the needle. But if you yep. go back to your initial point, which is a lot of times what we're doing is we're changing business processes and we change how the business operates. There's going to be times where you actually, you know, change how the business operates so that the next iteration of the business is already at a good level of security. So you almost don't have to put energy to basically to keep or maintain that state. And I, and I, I think that that's a very interesting way to You still to have to. Because, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but you, you yeah. don't have to, do you know what I mean? But, you, but it's almost like it's the place where you actually got security because you change how the business operates versus uh, the more whack-a-mole where you have to go, oh, okay, you know, let's keep improving the security to, you know, which, which basically via a security program, right? Yeah, so the and you 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 business you change the business and business changes, but the uh, even if this stuff is still uh, like just imagine that you change the business and you've got much better uh, security posture now, and you would think, oh, we've got less things to do now, but the threat environment changes. Oh yeah, and, I don't think we yeah. we have less to do because yes, you're right. You know, and also you you, you increase the things you want to change, right? But yeah. your scope increases. But I think it's interesting to measure how much 
of it real impact you're doing, i.e. how much you're moving from whack-a-mole to actually doing a lot more strategic things and already yeah. working on much more the medium and long term where the business is going because yeah. the business is also changing dramatically. Yeah. So you can measure whatever, like, uh, if everything, like, when I, well, what I love about this uh, simple, like, <laughs> like this paradigm it helps to uh just look at this from different angles and talk to everyone in the business because you add details in here with the bit like if you apply to the company and admit to it for the company there will be business risk business processes and mm -hmm. it allows you to talk to business about it and then uh that's uh and i agree with you when then just we need to like security program here, it's not classical security program. Security program is that we were talking about the secure operating model based on the key operating model. So it's not just like, uh, okay, let's create policies now, let's do the um, configure our controls and stuff. No, security program here would be, uh, we have a security uh, steering uh, committee that talks and reports to the board regularly. We've got, um, in this committee, we've got uh, representatives from all uh, business functions. Mm -hmm. We decide what we need to do with people, processes, and technology. And that's why the security program is not part, should be not part of the IT department. This is the top uh, business level um, uh, yeah. thing that uh, uh, dri driven by security steering committee. Yep. And how do you capture the data that you show there? Do you have tools that you use? Do you use spreadsheets? How do you capture the data? To You're talking about assessments? To, well, the output of the assessments and then the translation yes. from the assessments yeah. to the... Let's go. Yeah. Let's, we've got 20 minutes to cover the slides. Okay, so when you're talking about cybersecurity assessments, we're not, we do not invent bicycle. Uh, we use yeah. um, frameworks and for... Actually, you can use any framework, including ISO 27K1, because they've got a set of controls. So you can use any set of controls as your question points. But again, we're not doing audit. So when you see this ISO 27K1, it's not about audit, but it's using this structure, their approach, how they um, slice this elephant, right? So their, their butcher, I call it a butcher map. <laughs> uh, so you can use any butcher map in here. So the most uh, use of, like the two ones that we I use almost every day are NIST CSF and CAS cybersecurity 18 uh, cybersecurity controls. Uh, for New Zealand is also very um, important one is NZISM that all government agencies use. I think for Europe it will be GTP something like GDPR uh, guidelines or there's some other stuff. And uh, ISO 27 K1 is also a good um, framework, like because it's not the controls one, controls ones are 27 K2, but this one is called risk management certification. So it really helps to understand your uh, controls, uh, how they related to risks. So we will talk a little bit more in detail. I will use as examples NIST and CAS, and we'll look like now how, how assessment would look like and what we would use there. So assessment procedure that I use and that I look looked at other um, solutions like tools and stuff, and then that's the would be for most of them, it's the same. So we uh, get the context uh, and just to really understand what we're doing here, what the organization is about, especially for the external assessment, it's very important to understand what this business is about. <clears throat> That's where I have a meeting with the customer and I just ask, so what's your business? Tell me about this. So what do you do? What's your crown jewels? So what's the most important to you? What's your place in the industry? And all these type of questions. Then we create a threat taxonomy. <clears throat> Even we either ask them, but not all companies have it. And it's not even the risk uh, register because often it's um, not usable for assessments, but we just create this risk taxonomy to understand what the major risks for this company, depending on their industry or nature of their business. And then we gather data by conducting interviews, sometimes reading documents, but interviews is the main source of the data. Then I do analysis. So I all these interview answers I will record into a tool or spreadsheet, and we'll talk about it in, um, in more detail in a second. And then I score the findings. Again, we'll talk about it, what does it mean and what uh, um, possible in there. And then I will compile a report 
with all these charts and findings and recommendations, and then I will present it. And again, the presentation will, the type of the presentation will depend on who we're talking to. Is it just business or the business and experts or just experts? Just, it depends. And sometimes I do more than one presentation depending on the different audiences in the company. So let's have a look into each step in detail where we'll talk about tools and what's possible. So context gathering, it's important to identify stakeholders. It's not only for external, for internal assessment. Also, it's important to understand who will consume your report and whom to talk to, who will be in charge, like who will help you to get access to people you need to get access to. Then you need to identify main respondents, um, just like not everyone, you need. You do not need to interview everyone in the company. Depending on the context, you really just identify, okay, I need to talk to uh, CFO, uh, COO, uh, and CTO, for example, and plus to the whoever's doing the security, security manager, because there will be technical questions about infrastructure network uh, and um, uh, devices and all this stuff. Then we describe business context, just what this business is about and what's important for it and create threat taxonomy. So threat taxonomy, there's a lot of guides. You can just Google it and there will be a lot of um, uh, just like uh, lists, like trees of all possible threats. And I have my guide. I just use it for my conversations, but I uh, get this from conversations with people, just what's important for you? What do you think, uh, what the worst thing can happen? What have, will happen to a business? And I really, uh, like, I really like that. How do you how do you store that tree? There's, oh and, no, and this is how, a, how it's a document. Yeah, so it's just a document, and for me, just like there will be high level um, uh, taxonomy. Sorry, a lot, some of the stuff I can't share because it's intellectual property of the company and stuff. Yeah, yeah of course. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, but it's cool, it's in cool general, they're good. Yeah, so threat, threat taxonomy, for me, just a tree. So the high level will look like uh, data loss, uh, system uh, compromise, um, uh, outages like uh, uh, unavailability. That's threats, right? And, like, and then there will be uh, something like this. Then inside, you'll have different types, like about data loss. You'll have intentional data loss, unintentional data loss, like unintentional data exposure, intentional loss, like breach. From the system compromise will be a credentials compromise or network breach, the perimeter breach, or something like this. And if you Google, you can find it online. There's um, different things for because if you are in doing assessments internally, uh, it's a nice thing to have. Uh, for mature, a mature company will have it done because usually we um, it's one of the. Uh, things we also offer and where I do a threat asset, um, threat taxonomy, like threat uh, workshops, right? I'm like, so you do like in the business, you'll have it. But if the business is not mature enough, especially if it's a small company, uh, we do assessments for like company with a 10 people size. Why not? They yeah. also need to you, need both, For the yeah. organizations, do you have thread trees that are customized to specific business sectors or particular teams? So you isolate a little bit that taxonomy? Uh, no. For myself, I just found out that the difference between uh, uh, business, so it's more about stage of the business than the industry. There is huge difference yeah. between, for example, like differences like um, health, for example, banking, like finance, health, finance, and then everyone else. Because we don't yeah. go deep into physical security here. There's a little bit yeah, of yeah. this, but from my experience, physical security is, um, in most of the cases, well covered because it's health and yeah. safety. There's a lot of regulations, and yeah, it's yeah. not. No, I, I was thinking more in terms of the different maturity levels of different parts of the organization yeah. that so, will have different threads, but also the assets that they have. So if you look at a part of the organization that deals with healthcare data is very different from an organization that deals with public information or a part of organization yeah. that deals with, yeah. you know, let's say CVs or HR data, right? So yeah. each of those actually has different threads and different threat actors, right? Yeah. So I found out that all organizations, uh, there will be something like for all of them, there will be shared, like it's the common threads, like all the same. So everyone uh, is susceptible for data loss and 
um, system uh, compromise, right? <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what important is it, the detail? So you, uh, when I do the report, I put the, like, in what form exactly for this business, the threat can be uh, materialized, right? So, and uh, I, I was thinking about, okay, we can have different uh, taxonomies for different industries as the um, uh, like blueprint to use, but then I learned, no, it's just at the blueprint level, it's the same for everyone. At the detail level, it's different for everyone. Of course. Yeah. Cool. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. So data gathering, what do we do? So interviews and documents, yes. And interviews I really enjoyed because that's it's kind of a little bit of interrogation and cross-examination, but in a friendly manner, because what you try, you try to find out truth. You try, you try to find out who the murderer, right? Like <laughs> murderer kind of thing. So sometimes I feel like, like, you know, they are a cute poor <laughs> trying to find what do you really mean? What are you really doing here? Because sometimes people really uh, do not uh, understand how these things connected to security. And they say, why are you asking this? And then I explain this, you know, this is how it can be exploited. That's why it's important that you are doing this or this and this area, oh, things. And a lot of education happening during interviewing because people didn't think about a lot of things before they were asked. So I really love assessments as a part of like um op like uh, eye opening for people when you start asking the question what about this what about that oh we didn't think about this we didn't know it's connected to our cybersecurity and all this stuff because now you know oh thank you so much and then they start thinking in this direction so I really enjoy this documents just what I usually do is just to really look at the information security policy. Uh, few standards, uh, their existence is already a good sign. Uh, and I don't go deep into the detailing, um, that's the audit job, but uh, it's nice to look at the uh, these documents to see the, the security culture. You can see in information security pol um, policy, the main one, uh, uh, it just tells about the um, maturity of the company straight away. Tools, this is important one. So. Uh, I will like for most of the cases. So there are some tools in on the market. Uh, unfortunately, I have to come across a good one yet. But for uh, self-assessment, for internal assessments, when you do it not as a consultant, as a business to a company, like to many customers, but if you just do it for your company, there are some stuff, they're all the same. So what's important is not the quality of the tool, but the understanding how to apply it. And we'll talk about it in the next slide. So if at the beginning, you even don't have to uh, have a tool, you can use a spreadsheet. So what you do, you take a NIST, for example, and NIST got all these uh, categories and like functions, categories and subcategories. So each subcategory, you turn into a question about the subcategory, and then you have a column for uh, information about the like answers. Then there will be scoring column for like a score. We'll talk about it. And then uh, you take all the scores into the next tab and then you create um, charts. And I'm sure if you look up online, there will be something that people might be shared because we use our internal one. I um, I personally developed a spreadsheet for CS assessments. So when I just conduct interview, I will just put all the answers into the boxes, then I will score it. And then all this goes into this charts uh, and I have this, charts by function, by device, by type uh, of the control. They're called safeguards in CS. And then needs the same. Uh, and then you also put uh, recommendations in the another uh, column that will help you to uh, see, uh, we'll talk about it in the analysis, how I, uh, how I uh, look at the recommendations and then uh, compile a report. So with tooling, I can show you one tool for CIS. Uh, 18, it's a nice tool that you can use for self-assessment, but uh, be careful. Can you see this? Um, can you see my uh, browser? Yeah, 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 I can, yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, uh, the links to all this stuff is will be at the uh, final slide. 
there will be links to all these resources uh, so people can just look at it, take a screenshot or whatever. So this is like CAS controls the system specification. It's an open source um, uh, document that is shared on GitHub. You even can edit it by creating a pull request. But what I love about it is that code, if you go to a control, it's got all the ex like different like ex explanation of this control, even more than in the official documentation. And then you've got uh, safeguards for this control. And for safeguards, you've got uh, inputs. And uh, what do you need to... Uh, so this one a little bit be careful with this one so i don't use it literally like it is because it sounds like audit like you really gather evidence and you count things like how many unauthorized devices compared to authorized devices you have in the system and this type of stuff but reading through this will really give you a good picture of what we're talking about in here and if you need to go to more um, um measured stuff later uh, this also got all these uh, formulas and metrics, how to measure the stuff. So this one is also good. You can use this metrics as part of your security program. And uh, uh, But don't take it literally. So if you go to a self-assessment, you don't have to uh, collect all these metrics and calculate them. You can if you have time and it's required by your uh, organizational style. Uh, and if there is need for this and budget for this, like time budget, you can, but you don't have to just like take it with a, not a pinch of salt, but just like you don't have to uh, do all the steps literally how they recommend it here. But it's a very good example how you can turn uh, assessment into uh, metrics later for your cybersecurity uh, program. So, yep, uh, in general, you can just start with the um, uh, spreadsheet. And it works. Sure. Uh, analysis. So this is a very important one. That's where the threat taxonomy plays the key role and how it says, like, why I'm saying that, unfortunately, uh, chat GPT from so far cannot help in here. And uh, that's another point that I will talk about it later a little bit, that uh, you can have self-assessment or you can uh, invite, um, uh, outsource it, invite like a consultant. That's the where the consultant really pays off uh, in analysis because this is a tricky thing. So you can, uh, I will like that you could, you record findings for each control or safeguard or subcategory, depends on the framework you use. Then you look at them and then you score them. And scoring can be different, depends. Uh, for the NIST one, uh, it's very popular one is like um, zero, the control is not existent, non-existent. One will be it uh, exists, but not non-efficient. Two is partially efficient and three is fully efficient. And But what does it mean? That's important part. We look at the control and we do not check it. Yes, it exists, it works. We uh, look at the control, and if this control reduces the risk that uh, related to the threat that we defined, then we mark it as efficient. Sometimes if the control is just not fully implemented, but how it was implemented is this reduces the risk for this company a lot because the risk is low, then we can mark it efficient because it's enough. And sometimes the control is implemented in full, but some like technical control. But in our case, for this question, for this subcategory, for example, the threat uh, introduced, um, uh, the threat we like we found out, like the, the defined in the South Threat Taxonomy, uh, the risk that introduced by the threat is not reduced at all because this technical control exists, but another control, like process control, for example, is missing, then even if it's a checkbox, yes, we've got inventory, but if this inventory is not connected to detecting unauthorized devices, who cares, right? And something like this. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's very important to understand these links between each safeguard 
and risks and threats. And then you evaluate them only in the light of these risks and threats, not just like, ah, oh, yes, we have it, and now we don't have it. That's the pitfall. A lot of self-assessment and often uh, outsourced assessments fall into. So that's, again, like we mentioned before, it's not a checklist. Here, you really need to involve this understanding of the business context, uh, business uh, functions and relations between all the things inside of the business and outside of the business. That's where your expertise, knowledge, and general knowledge um, comes um, into play. And that's where you can think about the safeguard and say, yes, it's efficient. Yeah, no, it's not efficient. The same thinking uh, 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 is um, used in the recommendations. So, okay, you don't have this. What you need to have to reduce this risk in this control area? And it's not possible with just by checking. So whatever it asks, we need this control. Okay, we need to have MFA for everything. For MFA for everything, yes, we recommend it. And the most, I'll just use it as an example. Just imagine that for your company, it will be very difficult to implement it for everyone for different, like for cultural reasons, for example. People are very like um, conservative and they would reject, like for example, most of your um, workforce would reject it, right? They And they don't use mobile phones much, something like this. And then, and for you, the risk would be very low because most of them don't have access to much uh, of the system. So then you don't recommend them to roll out MFA for everyone. You would recommend to roll out M MFA only for admin uh, accounts, for example. So that's uh, uh, when you we do recommendations based on the business context because the main goal is to achieve the balance between doing the business and being secure because security in most cases is slowing down the business. This is your brakes. So you need your brakes, but you don't use them all the time. You still need the car, keep moving, right? So that's the balance. And to uh, reach this balance, you really need to understand business context and the relationship between risk threats and uh, security controls. Yeah. And uh, reports, uh, we just do, every report should have executive summary, some background and findings and recommendations and extra useful information. So the charts would look like this. You can see this example of just like the charts from the spreadsheets I created. And it's very important to, uh, so the your report language style meets your audience uh, requirements. And this is uh, very important to have an executive summary in every report because some people who are busy and then don't care about the details, like on the C-level or the board, they still can uh, understand what's going on by just reading one page of it. And presentation, again, depends on the audience and stick to the most important points. Don't be boring, honestly. So just uh, security is not all complex, difficult, and boring. Talk about business. Don't talk about uh, firewalls and uh, access, like uh, Asia ID yeah. details, like security groups and stuff. Yeah, read the room. Well, that's the key, right? You know, make sure it's it's relevant to your audience, right? Make sure it has business exactly. context, right? Because then they they really take it in. And I, I really like that risk based approach, right? To to present yeah. the data to them. Yeah. So because assessments are always uh, about uh, business, not about tech. Just this is, I think, the main message I would love to deliver today. They are way forward for the whole company. They're way forward for the business, not for either for the IT department or security uh, team. And as I mentioned already, so we have internal, external, we have initial, we have reassessment and reassessment, just like when you repeat it. And it's very nice to see the progress. And then you can have extra charts like in time. Okay, we were here, now we're here. And that's really this is what business really likes. This is like reassessments are really important for justifying your budget. This is what your main tool to get the budget for the next year for your security function. That's why it's good to start them at some point. Now you can show how it's improving so we can and that you need more. Like that's important to have this balance between, okay, we're improving, but this is how much left, how many gaps is still there. So please give us money, right? <laughs> 
And this is resources I was talking about. So this is the NIST framework. This is just description. And then you can download the uh, PDF with all the safeguards. So to create, and I'm sure there, they are, there is a spreadsheet somewhere online. I saw some time ago. Yes, they're definitely there. Uh, a lot of stuff uh, available. And again, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. Most importantly is that you uh, link your whatever controls you're assessing, whatever questions you've got, you link it to a uh, business function risk and threat. Because it's not uh, important if you have it or not, if it's not reduces the um, actual risk for the business. Yeah. Very cool. You'll be, to be honest, you will be amazing to see if you can anonymize some of your actual reports and some of your visualizations and some of uh, your examples, because yeah. that that, yeah. will, that will bring you a lot more to light, right? And yeah. uh, to see the, because the challenge yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, unfortunately, this is I like IP. This is like what brings this company, like what how I bring this company money, and it's just like the because the tools are not uh, available widely and open tools. That's why we um, invent our own tools. And yeah. that's how well, there's still like, a place in the market, yeah. right? It's there's still a place in the market for yeah. for you know for this because you're right. You know there isn't a lot of good tools. Which actually, where actually we talk about this on a chat GPT session, right? There's I think there's a lot of evolution that we're going to see on these areas that really need context and analysis. And I think the next evolution of chat, you know, GPT like technologies where you can really isolate the data set. So you can say, look, here's a big data set, go and consume it. Now you can query it. That's going to, that's going to be crazy powerful. Yeah. You know, so at that level. With yeah, with assessments, I would be careful to go into the big data because I think for what from my experience, like when I started this, I am got uh like ai and data background technical background so okay what can i do how i can make it efficient how i can just really um, um the processes how i automate stuff how i make it like really what can i do here from the tool perspective and when uh half a year into this i just learned that the most important part in here is talking to people and applying this uh general analysis and you can't replace it by no tool or no oh, automation. Yeah, absolutely. And but you can I'm, scale that analysis, right? That's the uh, I don't know. That's for like I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe. Because currently I'm uh training um my like colleagues to do this, like 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 the uh, cybersecurity consultants, like they start in this journey and to train them. And when I explain them to them what I do every time I understand, uh how would I automate? Because I'm for automation. I really love this stuff, and um, I'm a former, uh, if, like software engineer. That I really love coding, and how would I code it? And I understand that every time the most important insights come from our conversations. Oh yeah, yeah, to, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. putting aside this, I confident there will uh, uh, there are a lot of things to uh, use uh, AI like open AI type of models in um, gathering data and organizing data for future analysis I agree just in general yeah. cybersecurity I see a lot of um, yeah. areas of application yeah cool well I think that was that's all the questions we had here uh, thanks, thanks for doing this session. This was really cool. The video will be available very soon, and I'll, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. Bye. Brilliant.